Welcome back to The Hobbit. Today, we will be discussing the world of the 10 Oscar winners. If you are interested in purchasing this t-shirt, the link can be found in the description. Without any delay, let us begin. The film opens with a flashback to the past, where 20 rings are laid out on a table. Three rings are designated for the ancestors, described as gentle and bright beings. Nine rings are meant for those who require strength, and seven for those with exceptional abilities in their hands and feet. The remaining 19 rings are under the control of Sauron's magic ring, or as it is otherwise known. One ring to rule them all. Unyielding to this power, the Human League and the Ancestors rose up and attacked Mordor, determined to defeat Sauron once and for all. In a moment of desperation, a Sildur of the Human League severed Sauron's fingers, vanquishing him and claiming the God's Ring. The heart of a human is easily broken. Isildur chose to keep the ring instead of destroying it as he had originally planned. However, this choice ultimately cost him his life when he was attacked and killed by an orc army. As for the God's Ring, it betrayed Isildur and remained silent for 2,500 years until it was found by Smeagol. The ring caused Smeagol to become a golem instead of aging into an elder, a transformation that took only five months. Gollum and the ring were together for five centuries in the Mountain of Bone. However, the ring eventually slipped off Gollum's face and into the hands of a new owner. Gollum was in great anguish over this loss, and it became one of the most renowned tales of all time. The next main character is Bilbo Baggins, a small hobbit. The story takes place 60 years later in the Green Shire of the Hobbit tribe. Here, Bilbo is writing a book about his life while waiting for the villagers to organize a grand 111th birthday party in his honor. The event is attended by Gandalf, the wizard. The birthday party is lively and fun, with colorful fireworks and banjos. However, in order to give a speech, Bilbo puts on his ring and disappears. He returns home, packs his things, and leaves the Shire. Unfortunately, this act does not go unnoticed by Gandalf, who is actually a dark wizard. He persuades Bilbo to give up the ring. After much deliberation, Bilbo finally agrees to return the ring in his house in the Shire to his nephew Frodo. After finishing her tapestry, she began her journey in Chushu Chang. Immediately after, there is a swift transition to Mordor, with magical rings and knights bursting out of their shields. Aware of the impending danger, Gandalf hastily consulted the ancient books once again. He returned to Frodo's house and confirmed his fears by tossing the ring into the fire in the furnace. A line written in the dark language of Mordor appeared, leaving no doubt that this was Sauron's ring. Gandalf then revealed to Frodo the truth about the ring and its connection to King Sauron. Sauron had been searching for the ring for a long time. The witch also knew that Sauron's army had captured Gollum and had discovered the ring in Bilbo's possession. As a result, the prince was compelled to depart from the Shire, and not all of the hobbits chose to come back to their homeland. Frodo was worried about the situation, so he passed the responsibility on to Gandalf. The witch immediately refused, as the ring would give him too much power that he couldn't control. However, Frodo also needed to limit his wearing of the ring as much as possible, since it would attract the attention of the Lord of Mordor. With the idea that Frodo would have to go alone, Gandalf discovered that Sam was listening outside. Though initially angered by Sam's behavior, Gandalf eventually asked Sam to accompany Frodo as a guard. The witch suggested they travel to Bree, where he would soon meet them again. Sam and Frodo left the Shire, marking the first time they had left their homeland. If I take one more step, it will be the farthest I have ever been from home. However, a group of ghosts flew by, and our little hobbits died in a hurry after hiding under the trees. They had been trying to wake up the other creatures, but the sudden appearance of the ghosts caused them to panic and meet their untimely demise. At that moment, Frodo found himself caught in a trap and was forced to grab it with his hand. However, Sam intervened just in time and stopped him. After their encounter with the Black Riders, the hobbits finally arrived at Bree's Market. 
Gandalf had arranged for them to meet at the Prancing Ponies Inn, where they set up camp. However, to their surprise, the mysterious and long-haired witch did not appear as expected. As a precaution, Frodo reluctantly revealed his face to limit any suspicion, but the sun did not betray them. In a strange twist of events, the One Ring suddenly slipped onto Frodo's finger, revealing the Hobbit's location to the Black Riders. Before they could react, Strider's guards appeared and warned them of the danger. Acting quickly, Strider rearranged their escape, and the entire group managed to flee from the impending attack by the Black Riders on the Prancing Pony. Strider offered to escort the Hobbits to Rivendell, the home of the ancestors. No one objected, as they no longer had Gandalf to lead the way. So, where is that ugly silver-haired wizard? He went to meet with Surman the White, the leader of the Wizard Council, to discuss their plan against Sauron. However, the White Wizard was aware of their plan and tried to convince Gandalf to serve Sauron instead. Despite Gandalf's rebellion, they fought with the power of their magic. Unfortunately, the silver-haired wizard was overpowered and forced to serve the white wizard. Gandalf was captured by Saruman and held captive on the top of Orthanc. Did we know until then that Saruman was building an army to conquer the Isengard region? Goodbye. A nocturnal bird woke Gandalf up and delivered a letter asking for his assistance. Following this, a magnificent eagle from Valar rescued the witch. Returning to the hobbits, the rest of the group made a stop at Weathertop on their journey to Rivendell. The other members of the company provided weapons for the hobbits and allowed them to set up camp. However, their greedy personalities have harmed them. The entire group burned the firewood in the middle of the night to cook. The only response was to send a message that my husband's grave was haunted by the ghosts that lay there. As they waited, the wolf's body rushed to attack the hobbits. Despite wearing a ring to cover his face, Frodo was still stabbed by the witch with a Morgul sword. Just then, Strider appeared and chased away the demons, saving Frodo's life. The hobbit found himself in a perilous situation, but Princess Orwin of the Priests appeared and led our alliance to safety in Rivendell, just in time to escape the rampage of Sauron's followers. After being cured, Frodo discovered that Gandalf, Bilbo, and all the other hobbits were with him but the joy did not last long. The King of the Elves, Elrond, informed Gandalf that the ring could not stay in Rivendell. Moreover, the line of the human kings was also broken and only the heir of Gondor could reunite it. It was later revealed to the audience that Strider was actually Aragorn, the rightful heir of Gondor. Additionally, Aragorn and the Princess Arwen had been in love for a long time. However, if he wanted to maintain this love, Arwen would have to give up her immortality, a precious privilege of the elves, by staying in the human world. In order to find a solution to the problem, Elrond called for an emergency meeting to determine the fate of the ring. He declared that the ring must be destroyed where it originated, beneath the lava of Mount Doom. This volcano is situated in Mordor, adjacent to Sauron's Barad-dûr tower. This means that the journey will be arduous and fraught with peril, potentially even resulting in death. A heated debate erupted over who would assume the responsibility for this daunting task. Amidst the chaos, Frodo bravely stepped forward and volunteered to take on the challenge himself. This brave action was accompanied by the joining of other individuals, resulting in the establishment of a union. Four of our Hobbit brothers from the beginning of the film participated, as well as the witch in a gray Gandalf shirt, the Golden Knight of Gondor, Aragorn, the warrior from the Gimli tribe, the conqueror Legolas, and Boromir, the son of Gondor, who currently rules the kingdom in place of the rightful king who has yet to be seen. The team headed south, attempting to traverse the snowy mountains through the Caratheris Pass. However, Saruman did not make it easy. He conjured a fierce snowstorm, obstructing the team's path and forcing them to alter their route through the Moria Tunnel, which was also controlled by the Lun people. Kim Lee was devastated to discover that all of his brothers had died. Despite the somber atmosphere of the film, Pippin quickly returned to reveal the location of the interlude for Baywatch. As soon as the other monsters arrived, the Alliance was pushed into an unnecessary battle, greatly outnumbered. Despite being crowded, the orcs and trolls were no match for the Alliance's fighting prowess. Frodo managed to dodge an orc's arrow thanks to the strength and lightness of his mithril armor. The next challenge proved to be much more difficult for the previous players. 
They were tasked with finding a way out of the soon-to-be-destroyed mine and confronting Baroque, a fearsome giant monster that even intimidated the orcs. Finally, the Union could still leave Moria, but the cost would be steep. In an effort to stop the Balrog, Gandalf was dragged into the depths of the abyss and silenced. Fly, you <laughs> fools. Thank you for watching. Despite the pain, the entire team had to remain resilient and press on, as Aragorn had warned them that time was running out. Their next destination was Lothlorien, a picturesque region known as one of the ancestors' most enchanting domains in Middle-earth. It was here that they encountered Galadriel, the queen of this realm. And in case you were not aware, the voice of the main character in the movie belongs to her. On that night, Galadriel pulled Frodo aside for a private conversation. She asked the hobbit to look into the mirror, which was actually a pool, and told him what he would see. Frodo followed her instructions and saw a vision of the Shire being destroyed, his friends surrounded by orcs, and even Sauron's furious eyes. Galadriel warned him that this was the future that awaited if he failed in his mission. Frodo expressed concern about his own abilities, but the queen reassured him that as the guardian, he would have to face this journey alone, as no one else could share this burden with him. At the same time, Galadriel overcame her guilt over the ring. She then continued to encourage Frodo by giving him the light of Arendil, which would guide him when all other lights failed. In fact, Galadriel bestowed gifts upon all the other members of the Fellowship. After being provided with food and supplies, the Fellowship bid farewell to Lothlorien and continued their journey along the river. In a separate event, Saruman has completed his uruk -hai army, which consists of large, strong, and incredibly powerful creatures with the sole intention of destroying the human world. The White Witch has commanded the uruk -hai army to follow the Alliance and eliminate all beings while also capturing the Hobbit society. You do not understand pain and you do not experience fear. You will soon taste the flesh of a man. As our heroes return to the marriage scene, they reach Rauros and must make a decision, continue on to Mordor or return to Minas Tirith in the west. While the entire team ponders their options, Frodo sets off on his own, surprised to find Boromir following him. While the hobbits want to continue the journey alone, Boromir is once again tempted by the power of the ring, believing it can save the kingdom of Gondor. When Boromir attacked him, Frodo put on the ring and disappeared. It was the longest he had ever worn it, and he was now visible to Sauron's eyes. After waking up, Frodo found Aragorn by his side. However, after his recent encounter, Frodo no longer trusted Aragorn. Despite this, Gondor had managed to overcome the challenge that Boromir had failed. As the uruk -hai army closed in, the remaining members were forced to fight. Aragorn asked Frodo to flee and face the monsters alone. During that time, Boromir, Merry, and Pippin also fought fiercely. However, in the end, Boromir received numerous stitches and was gravely wounded. He was unable to prevent the two hobbits from being captured. Aragorn was the strongest of them all. He single-handedly pushed back Orc Thekka's army, leaving Boromir to deal with Thoithop alone. Despite Boromir's confession of attempting to steal the ring, Aragorn still saw him as a formidable warrior. In a display of unwavering loyalty to their cause, Boromir met his demise. The remaining members of their group, including Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, made the decision to let Frodo continue his journey alone while they returned to Earth to rescue Merry and Pippin. Upon his return to the river, Frodo expressed regret for the marriage, but he also recalled Gandalf's words about his destiny. Afterward, the hobbit set off on a small boat. Soon after, Sam followed in the same direction, even though he didn't know how to swim. I'm going to Mordor alone. Of course you are. And I'm coming with you. After being rescued, Sam promises once more that he will not leave Frodo's side. Touched by Sam's unwavering loyalty and determination, Frodo agrees to let him support him. Together, they begin their journey by climbing a mountain. In the distance stands the fiery red land of Mordor. And with that, the first part of our adventure comes to an end. The Two Towers opens with Gandalf falling into the abyss while fighting the Balrog. As they both plummet, Gandalf manages to strike the creature with his sword, causing it to fall to its death. However, Gandalf also falls into the water with the Balrog's body. At that moment, we see Sam and Frodo still wandering aimlessly around Mordor. They appear to be lost and not making any progress. Suddenly, they catch a strange smell and encounter Gollum, 
a plump, emaciated creature with dark skin who was once a hobbit. Gollum immediately becomes aggressive, accusing Sam and Frodo of being thieves who belong to him. The two sides prepare to fight, but the odds seem to be in Gollum's favor. However, he is quickly subdued by Sam and Frodo. They tie a rope around his neck and discuss their next move. While Sam remains suspicious of Gollum, Frodo expresses his dissatisfaction with him. In the end, they have no choice but to reject him, even though he claims to know the way to Mordor. In Rohan, the uruk are on their way to bring Merry and Pippin back to Saruman. However, they are unaware that they have captured the wrong person. Little do they know, the three skilled warriors, Aragorn, Legolas, and Kimli, are also on their way to rescue the hobbits. After traveling for three days, Legolas discovers crucial information. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. At Rohan's castle, King Theoden was in a state of despair following the death of Wormtong, and the army was under Saruman's control. At this time, Saruman's uruk were freely wreaking havoc, slaughtering and torturing the Rohirrim. The situation became even more dire when Eowyn and Eomer informed King Theoden that his son had been attacked by Saruman's army and was gravely injured, with no hope of survival. However, Theoden felt helpless and could do nothing to stop the chaos. Eomer, Theoden's nephew, accused Wormtongue of being a traitor, but this accusation was quickly dismissed and Eomer was banished from the kingdom. In the end, Theoden gathered all the loyal soldiers and led them out of the city of Rohan. That night, as the uruk were escorting Merry and Pippin, they were ambushed by Eomer's knights. The army quickly fell apart under Saruman's control. Merry and Pippin successfully escaped to the Fangorn Forest. In the forest, they encountered Treebeard, a massive creature native to Middle-earth. Treebeard then led the hobbits to meet the White Witch, who turned out to be Saruman. However, director Peter Jackson chose to end the scene at this point. Continuing on Sam and Frodo's journey of reconciliation, and with the guidance of Colum, the two of them reached the Death Pagoda. As they made their way through the corpses of soldiers from the second century, Frodo was suddenly overcome by a haunting presence within the pagoda and fell. Colum acted quickly, pulling Frodo to safety and saving his life. Together, Frodo and Sam continued on to Blackgate, heading towards Mordor. While surveying their surroundings, Sam accidentally stepped on unstable ground and began to fall off a cliff, drawing the attention of nearby soldiers. In a daring act, Frodo rushed to Sam's aid, and the three of them narrowly escaped. Although it was nearly impossible to enter through this door, they managed to find a way. However, Gollum stopped Frodo and informed that he knew a safe entrance through the back door. Although Sam remained wary of this stranger, Frodo showed kindness by referring to Gollum as Smeagol, his former name as a hobbit. When Yilmer finished off the uruk Aragorn had just arrived. Everyone had believed that the hobbits were dead, but Aragorn showed his small stature as he crawled deep into the Fangorn forest, proving that the two hobbits were still alive. As Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli ventured deeper into the forest to search for Merry and Pippin, they discovered that the White Witch had been mentioned mistakenly, and it was actually Gandalf. He recounts the process of resurrection, and the witch warns that Rohan is in danger of being defeated in the war. Realizing the gravity of the situation, everyone rushes to Rohan. Upon arriving in Rohan, we learn that the son of King Theoden is Theodred, who died in the arms of Eowyn. Before meeting King Theoden, the group must surrender all their weapons, but Gandalf cleverly keeps his scepter. Later, the witch uses the scepter to break King Theoden free from her control. Upon being freed, Theoden becomes strong and youthful and banishes the evil Wormtongue. However, their joy is short-lived as the villagers soon announce that the Orc and Orc II troops are approaching. Despite his grief over the loss of his son, King Theoden orders the evacuation of all residents to Helm's Deep, a cave deep in the mountains, in order to protect the kingdom. Gandalf expresses concern that Helm's Deep may not be able to withstand the attack. Before the attack of the uruk Tut army, Ben left to search for Ilmer and promised to return within five days with over 2,000 soldiers. Meanwhile, the rebel Wormtong flew to Orthanc to entice Saruman to the vulnerable spot at Helm's Deep. While they waited for this, the sorceress led the army to the mountain with instructions not to harm anyone. In the middle of the night, 10,000 uruk Tut tentacles attacked leaving Helmsteep in a toxic state. Meanwhile, Frodo continued on his journey. At this point, three individuals had reached Athelion, and Gollum engaged in a heart-to-heart -heart battle. 
On one side was Smeagol the Good, who desired to aid and serve Frodo. On the other side was Gollum the Bad, who only wanted to possess the ring. In the end, Smeagol's personality temporarily prevailed. Come, 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 he declared, feeling free. The next day, he even brought a rabbit to Sam and Frodo. As they enjoyed their meal, they spotted a Harad army marching towards Mordor. It was a part of Sauron's campaign. However, he was killed by Faramir's army, the brother of the hero Boromir, in the first part. Later, Faramir discovered Frodo's group and captured them alive. While journeying to Helmsteep, Eowyn started to develop feelings for Aragorn. However, their happiness was short-lived as they were suddenly ambushed by Saruman's army. Eowyn was tasked with safely leading the refugees to Helmsteep, while Aragorn was attacked by a warthog and fell into the flaming river. Despite the shock and sorrow, the survivors had to push forward and make their way back to Helmsteep. At that moment, he realized that the ancestors were in grave danger. Elrond pleaded with the girl named Orwen to leave Middle-earth to avoid the looming troubles. Despite her deep love for Aragorn, the princess adamantly refused. Undeterred, Elrond attempted to persuade her by painting a picture of what would happen if she chose to stay in Middle-earth. He warned her that Aragorn, being only a pharmacist, would inevitably perish in the battle, leaving her with endless regret. After much contemplation, the princess reluctantly agreed and began her journey away from Middle-earth. Just then, Galadriel appeared and advised Elrond to withdraw from the battle, as it would ensure that Middle-earth would fall under Sauron's control. At that time, Sam and Frodo were captured by the people of Henneth Anun, a city in the land of Athelion. That night, Columbus bore the brunt of it. Faramir wanted to send Gollum back to Nibiru, but Frodo intervened to protect the small creature. Frodo had to admit that Gollum was his responsibility. However, Columbus misunderstood Frodo's intentions and believed that he was indirectly responsible for their capture. This led to a fight between them, causing Faramir to continue his investigation and discover the ring that Frodo was carrying. Sam affirmed that their purpose was to destroy the ring, but Faramir, eager to prove himself to his father, decided that the ring belonged to Gondor. Let's return to Rohan. Fortunately, when Aragorn didn't sleep on the hill, he was swept into the river and awoken by the majestic horse of Theodred. Aware of the limited time, Gondor's secretary rode the horse back to Helm's Deep. Everyone was overjoyed by Aragorn's return, but the situation was far from comfortable. The uruk army was formidable, capable of crushing all efforts. Moreover, there were only a few soldiers with limited fighting skills. Fortunately, on that night, a group of ancestral helpers, led by Haldir, came to the rescue and showed kindness to Elrond. Meanwhile, deep in the forest of Fangorn, Merry, Pippin, and the Tree God discussed a plan to defeat Saruman. And then, one of the most epic battles in film history officially began. During the long rainy night, Helmsteep's cannons fired heavily at the Uruk II, claiming many lives. However, this was not enough to stop the monsters. They retaliated with direct combat tactics, using ladders to breach the defenses and enter Helmsteep's territory. While this attack was dangerous, it was not enough to shake the main force's defensive system. Aragon and his allies continued to resist, but their efforts were in vain when two bombers targeted and destroyed a weak spot in the cannons, allowing the Uruk II to flood into the city like a tidal wave. Despite Aragon and Kimli's valiant efforts, the main gate of Helmsteep was eventually breached, leading to the defeat of the Uruk II army. The situation worsened when Haldir and a few other ancestors fell in battle. On Hornburg's side, the wall had completely collapsed. The uruk flood was growing deeper and deeper, forcing the troops to retreat. On the other side of Fangorn Forest, after a lengthy discussion, the gods ultimately chose not to engage in battle, and the Ents were unable to withstand the onslaught of this storm. However, the intelligent Pippin did not accept this. He climbed a tree in a nearby forest that had been destroyed by Saruman near Isengard. Furious at Saruman's reckless actions, the High God calls upon his allies for a decisive revenge. They prepare to defend themselves and launch a final attack straight to the land of Isengard. Meanwhile, in Helm's Deep, King Theoden's despair is evident, but Aragorn refuses to give up. He remembers Gandalf's promise and pulls Theoden and Legolas out of the battlefield with the goal of defeating the Urukai leader and urging women and children to flee into the forest. 
As the knights charge into battle, Aragorn leads the way into the valley. From the north, a powerful force approaches. It is Gandalf, accompanied by Elmer and his army. The uruk rebels were unable to withstand the intense heat from the reinforcements and were forced to retreat into the Fancorn Forest. Despite their attempts to dodge the rain, they were hit by bullets and fell into the hands of the Tree God. By this time, the Tree God's army had already conquered the Isengard region, making it easy for them to defeat the remaining uruk in individual battles. Furthermore, they were able to defeat Isen when the river overflowed and flooded the Orthanc, resulting in the deaths of the remaining Luark. They also successfully captured Saruman, who was hiding in the Old Tower. At the same time, in the north, Frodo, Sam, Gollum, and Faramir headed to Osgiliath, a desolate city at the foot of the Anduin River. There, they came face to face with another ghost flying around. The ghost was able to catch Frodo without interference from Sam and Faramir. When they saw the ghost fly away, they knew they had defeated Helmsteep. Sam expressed his emotions and belief in finding a possible solution to their journey. However, Frodo had doubts about this belief, especially after he had killed Sam. Despite this, Faramir set them free and even aided them on their way. After defeating Helmsteep, Gandalf and the others looked towards Mordor and realized that a dark future was looming. The battle for Middle-earth is about to begin. The Empress confirmed that all hopes were now placed on Frodo and Sam. At that time, Columbus was angry and felt betrayed. He lost control of his emotions and claimed that he had captured the Queen by deceiving Frodo and Sam to go to the place where he believed a creature he described as an island was located. He quickly leads the hobbits, and in the distance, Mordor is ablaze. The final scene in the ring picks up right after the events of the two towers. However, the movie begins by taking us back to the past when Smeagol was still known as Columbus. We see Diagol take the ring off of Alduin's neck and Smeagol offers to take it as a birthday gift. However, Diagol refuses. Driven by greed, Smeagol gets into a physical altercation with his close brother and ends up killing him. He then takes the ring and retreats to the snowy mountains where he slowly transforms into Gollum. At the end of this chapter, we return to reality as Frodo and Sam, guided by Gollum, continue their journey to Mordor. The looming Mount Doom is now in sight, but Sam still struggles to trust Gollum's intentions. However, Frodo begins to sympathize with the small creature. Meanwhile, at Isengard, which has been laid to ruin, soldiers arrive, including those who led the victorious battle at Helm's Deep. Before they can proceed, the Treebeard announces that his kind has taken over the area, and Saruman is now trapped in Orthanc. The story continues. Soon after, Saruman appears on the Tower of Isengard. Isengard is now at odds with Theoden, but the king insists that peace can only be established when Saruman pays for the deaths of the Rowan people at Westfold and Helm's Deep by returning to his ancestors. Now that Theoden is out of favor, Saruman makes a deal with Gandalf, stating that Frodo is heading to his death and Aragorn cannot claim the throne of Gondor. In short, Isengard changes its stance and reveals that they have a palantir, a seeing stone, and claim to know all of the enemy's paths. Saruman also announces that Sauron is preparing for a final attack. Realizing the urgency of the situation, Gandalf decides to negotiate with Saruman and asks Theoden to come down and talk to him. However, Saruman turns his back once again and attacks Gandalf with a fireball. In response, Gandalf, who is also a powerful wizard, does not hesitate to strike back at Saruman. Saruman was immediately expelled from the Council of Witches. Still silent, he was joined by Wormtongue. King Theoden offered Wormtongue the chance to surrender and return to his role as Rohan's servant. Wormtongue pledged his obedience to the king, but Saruman declared that he was not free and violently slapped him to the ground. In a fit of rage, Wormtongue grabbed the ring on Saruman's back and then snatched a ring from Legolas. However, Legolas's agility was not enough to save Saruman, as Wormtongue fell from the tower and perished. As the Palantir ball slipped from Saruman's sleeve, Pippin quickly grabbed it. However, he had to return it to Gandalf. Afterwards, the entire team traveled to Adoras to celebrate Helm's Deep's victory. Pippin discovered that Gandalf was secretly following him, but was quickly swept up in the festivities. Later, Aragorn discussed Frodo's journey with Gandalf. The wizard confessed that he had no knowledge of the little hobbit's whereabouts, but his intuition assured him that Frodo was still alive. In Mordor, Frodo and Sam were sleeping while Gollum talked to himself. 
Smeagol considered killing Frodo to get the ring, but Gollum devised a plan to prevent Frodo from being harmed. He did everything in his power to execute his plan. Shh! However, this plan has been tampered with. He was about to call Gollum, but Frodo stopped him because he still believes that Gollum is not a villain. At Adoras, while everyone was asleep, Aragorn went outside with Legolas. The ranger realized that Sauron's gaze was fixed on the next ridge. Meanwhile, Pippin was drawn to a glowing orb. He snatched it from Gandalf's hand, despite Merry's warning. Pippin couldn't resist the allure of the orb and was quickly overcome by Sauron's power. He began to lose consciousness, but Gandalf and Aragorn were able to pry the orb from his grasp. Gandalf immediately asked Pippin, who was still in the palace, if he had revealed anything about Frodo and the ring. Pippin denied it, but did mention seeing a vision of a city engulfed in flames. The next day, Gandalf, Aragorn, Theoden, Legolas, Gimli, and the Hobbit duo Merry and Pippin discussed the information Pippin had received. Gandalf was certain that Sauron believed Pippin to be the one who possessed the ring, but was it true? Minas Tirith, the capital of Gondor, was a city of great importance. After his defeat at Helm's Deep, King Sauron recognized the threat that humans posed and sought to find a way to stop them. Gandalf informed King Theoden that if Gondor was ever in danger, Rowan would come to their aid in battle. However, as Gondor did not participate in the Battle of Hornburg, Rowan did not feel obligated to intervene. In response, Gandalf asked Aragorn to travel south and call for the black ships to come to the aid of Minas Tirith. Aragorn, accompanied by Pippin, swiftly made their way to the city and put Aragorn in his place. He also said that he would destroy the White City before anyone else could sit on the throne of the human race. However, Pippin still accepted Denethor's offer to return the favor to his son, Boromir, from the battle. However, Gandalf expressed his frustration because the evil Lord Gondor refused to find a way to redeem himself, but instead insisted on fighting while Sauron was about to destroy Minas Tirith. That night in Minas Tirith, while Pippin was preparing his army, Gandalf looked upon Gondor with fear in his eyes. He believed that Gondor was on the verge of extinction, and that if the orcs were to capture Osgiliath, there would be no defense line between the human capital and the army of Mordor. Despite Pippin's encouragement, Gandalf remained less optimistic than Bal. The worst part was when the old witcher announced that the leader of the witchers, the one who stabbed Frodo in the first part, would also appear. It was terrifying to think that this powerful being, who could not be killed by any man, resided in Minas Morgul. As the bell rang, we were instantly transported to the Dark Fortress. The sound of the bell echoed through the air, causing a sense of dread to wash over us. This place seemed to call out to the ring, drawing it closer to its true owner. Frodo struggled to resist its pull, but Gollum and Sam were quick to pull him back, saving him from its grasp. As Frodo regained his senses, the eerie green light of Minas Morgul shot up into the night sky, a chilling sight to behold. We all knew what was to come next. The name of the group of witches from Mordor quickly surfaced, their goal to conquer the kingdom of Gondor and the human race. We braced ourselves for the battle to come, knowing that it would be a fight for our very survival. On the other side of the line, Gandalf was also caught up in the situation. He ordered Pippin to light the signal at the highest point of Minas Tirith to call for a defensive battle. Meanwhile, in Osgiliath, Faramir and his army were preparing for battle. He dispatched scouts to gather information, ensuring that they would have enough time to defend if the orcs were to attack from the north. On the other side, in the middle of the river, the commander of the orc army, Gothmog, ordered his subordinates to remain silent as they approached Osgiliath. This was to create a surprise element for their attack. After breaching the first defense, the orcs began to take heavy casualties. Faramir realized that they would not attack from the north. Despite Denethor, the governor, deploying all of his troops to the riverbank for defense, the situation became critical as Gothmog's soldiers prepared to take over the city. A fierce battle ensued, and although Faramir's forces initially had the upper hand, they were eventually overwhelmed by the enemy army. In the end, they were forced to retreat from Osgiliath, but not without suffering significant losses. Faramir and his knights were among the few who managed to escape. They were able to do so with the help of Gandalf, who saved Faramir's life. On their journey back, Faramir warned Gandalf about Gollum's treachery after encountering the hobbits in Ithilien. Despite this warning, the Alliance continued their slow march towards Sirith Ungol. However, Gollum quickly betrayed them and captured Frodo. He understands the weight that the White Hobbit is trying to lift and plans accordingly. Ga even tricked Frodo into thinking that Sam would take the ring, but in reality, he was only trying to protect Frodo. At Osgiliath, while chasing the Gondor, the ringleader mistakenly targeted the wrong person and ended up killing innocent people at Minas Tirith. He also threatened to kill Gandalf. As for Denethor, he pushed Faramir to the battlefield again, 
despite not knowing where Boromir is. This reckless action is likely to result in Faramir's death. At Sirith Ungor, two hobbits were sleeping, drunk. Gollum had pulled all the food down the cliff and blamed Sam for eating it all. Frodo had almost run out of energy because of the ring, rendering him unconscious. When Sam suggested carrying the ring for Frodo, the water spilled, causing Frodo to turn his back on his friend. He then chased Sam all the way home. At this point, Vermeer is taking the lead in the battle, while Denethorne is having lunch and is being ambushed by most of the hidden heroes. Naturally, Faramir couldn't bear it. He returned to his horse, exhausted and nearly at death's door. In the opposite direction, at Dunharrow, someone was slowly riding towards the central race on the hill. It was Elrond, who had come to present Aragorn with the precious Anduril sword. The King of the Ancients asked Aragorn to use his sword to gather the soldiers of the dead Dunharrow and stop the landing of the Corsairs, who were advancing from the south bank. Aragorn quickly agreed, and that night, the King of Gondor, along with Kimli and Legolas, advanced to the Holt Forest. There they encountered the King of the Ghost Realm. At first, the King intended to kill all three of them, but Aragorn revealed the Anduril sword and forced him and his followers to fulfill their old oath. The dead had sworn an oath to Isildur in the past, so in order to be released from their curse, they had no choice but to obey Aragorn, the new King of Gondor. The next morning, King Theoden of Rohan was determined to lead 6,000 soldiers into battle. However, he was unaware that Eowyn and Merry had mistakenly joined the army. The Morgul army attacked the captives, instilling fear and chaos in the hearts of the people. In the midst of this, Denethor witnessed Faramir's body vanish and assumed that the creature was dead. Overwhelmed by the power of the orcs, Denethor was devastated and pleaded for Gondor to abandon their post. Enraged by the actions of his own subordinates, Gandalf sent Denethor and himself to take charge of the army. After that, the two sides competed with each other to maintain a balance. However, this all changed when King Angmar and the other witches invaded the Nazgul Palace. Their support gave Mordor a significant advantage. During this time, at Sirith Ungol, Gollum betrayed Frodo and led him into a confrontation with Lord Shilub. Fortunately, Sam returned and scared the creature away. However, he initially believed that Frodo had been killed. It was only when an orc arrived to investigate that Sam discovered Frodo had only been incapacitated by Shelob's poison. Upon returning to Minas Tirith, it became clear that Denethor had met his demise earlier than expected. Despite this, he had made the decision to hold a funeral for himself and his unconscious son, believing that the son of Faramir, who was also injured, had perished as well. Little did he know, the son of Thu was still alive. Gandalf and Pippin were aware of this and quickly came to rescue them both. However, upon their arrival, it was discovered that Denethor had already gone missing. As his body was engulfed in flames, Denethor learned of his son's survival. Knowing that he was on the brink of death, Denethor frantically fled from the tomb with his burning body, eventually falling from Minas Tirith. The inhabitants of the city were growing increasingly exhausted as the trolls flooded in through the broken main gate like a waterfall. The defense forces had no choice but to retreat to the top floor, leaving the orcs to continue their brutal attacks on the ground floor. However, in the midst of the chaos, a sudden roar echoed through the air, completely changing the course of the battle. What could be causing this sudden turn of events? Finally, it's time to bid farewell to Rohan. The reinforcements charged straight into the orcs with tremendous force, but their offensive did not last long, as the Harad army and Mumakil elephants also engaged in battle. Soon after, the King of the Witches confronted the King of Rohan while the Inhumans killed all the horses and the King of the Underworld. Thus, the battle was over and the humans were defeated, officially handing over Middle-earth to Sauron. That is simply a side effect of Minas Tirith lacking any additional support. In reality, the situation is different. The Corsair ships have landed, but not to assist the orcs. They have actually arrived to support the return of the king along with the Dunharrow Corps. Subsequently, the army was able to defeat all the orcs, Harad, and Mumakil elephants. Eowyn momentarily forgot the name of the leader as... Goodbye. The loss of the human race is significant as King Theoden has passed away. However, Aragorn must continue on his journey to free the cores of the dead, ensuring their rest in heaven now that their task is complete. The focus now shifts back to the journey of reconciliation. In Sirith Unka, Sam has successfully rescued Frodo. 
the area is relatively quiet as the orcs are fighting fiercely to obtain Frodo's mithril armor. The two companions begin their long journey to Mount Doom. However, Gandalf realizes that there are as with 10,000 troops between Sirith Uncaw and Mount Doom, making it impossible for Frodo and Sam to complete their mission. Fortunately, Aragorn has promised to lead the remaining troops to the Gate of Darkness to engage in battle against the Orcs and Sauron, creating a diversion for Frodo and Sam to complete their mission. Unfortunately, Frodo is completely exhausted and unable to continue. Although faced with challenges, he did not give up and instead helped his friend by supporting him on the shoulder and using all his strength to reach the top of the mountain. However, at this moment, Colum returned and attacked his friend, Hong Chiam Doat Chiap Nyat. This marked the beginning of the Battle of Moranon. Amidst the raging battle, Frodo finally reached the top of the mountain with the ring in hand. However, instead of destroying it and ending all the chaos, the hobbit was consumed by the power of the evil lord. He slipped the ring onto his finger and vanished, much to Sauron's dismay. The dark lord wasted no time and sent a ghostly ring to the mountaintop to put an end to the interference. Meanwhile, the ring bearer and his companion Sam were facing their own challenges. Gollum reappeared, awakening Sam and engaging in a fierce one-on-one -on -one battle with Frodo. In a desperate attempt, Gollum even bit off Frodo's finger with the ring. In the end, Gollum was reunited with the object of his obsession, but Frodo's mind was still under the ring's control. He couldn't let it end like this. He rose to launch a counterattack, but in the midst of the battle, both combatants fell to their deaths. Meanwhile, Gollum tumbled into the treacherous river below, clutching the crucial evidence. Despite his battered appearance, Frodo managed to cling onto a nearby rock, even though he had exerted all of his remaining strength. The following day, Sam pulled his friend up from the hot lava stream along with the ring that had sunk deep into it. Unfortunately, the ring had been destroyed, and Sauron had to face the consequences. The eyes of Gagao appeared before Cambion and Huvo after the Barad-dur tower collapsed. The master is gone, so the followers of Sauron, like the orcs and the witches, are all asleep. However, the Black Gate and Mordor are starting to awaken. As destruction looms, Frodo and Sam find themselves trapped in the Mountain of Doom. They begin to regret not being able to see the Shire once again. Fortunately, with the witches gone, Gandalf is able to summon the giant king who saves the two brave hobbits. In the capital of the human race, Aragorn officially ascended the throne and became the king of the West, ready to usher in a new era. After enduring numerous challenges, he was finally reunited with his people in Orwin. However, despite their significant roles, it was the hobbits who were the true heroes of this event. The entire alliance and its people knelt at the feet of the little creatures, expressing their deep gratitude for all that they had done. Finally, our little brothers and sisters had returned to their homeland. As peace settled upon the land, Sam returned with the family's arms, but Frodo's journey was not yet complete. Despite his escape, Frodo could not shake off the trauma inflicted by the ghosts. He came to the realization that he could never find peace in Middle-earth again. With Gandalf, Bilbo, Elrond, and Galadriel by his side, he made the decision to depart for Valinor, the land of the dead. Finally, the ship tilted straight towards the outermost, leaving behind the Mediterranean and the six-winged god of war. Pippin and Merry had already left, leaving only Sam behind. He stood alone, his eyes fixed on the long sunset. The film ended with Sam walking towards the back end of the ship, where he was warmly welcomed by his wife and children. Sam took a deep breath and spoke his final words before entering the house. The door closed, and the screen gradually turned black. The battle with the evil king Sauron had ended just like that. And that's the story of the King and Queen of the Rings. Which movie or character impressed you the most? Also, which series should we summarize next? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Thank you for watching this super long video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Here's looking at you, kid. Great, I understand. Look at me. I love you more than I have ever loved anyone.